Hello everyone, this is a music teaching activities video using a game that I found on the weekend and it's Bejeweled which I believe is a computer game I've seen on Facebook that people play it, I haven't actually played it myself but I was just interested in what was inside so I love using game pieces, I go to a second hand book fair a couple of times a year to get old board games and use the bits and pieces so I could see through the window of this box that inside were these really colourful gems and counters and we're actually having a kings and queens theme concert at the end of the year so I thought they might come in handy for something but I've been working on some scale and chord based activities using the pieces so it came with seven different colours, so straight away, of course, I thought very significant. That's the number of letters in the music alphabet. So there's these gems on top of tiles. And it came with a white board. And there are 12 of each coloured tile. And so that's enough to do an octave's worth of notes. I'm considering getting a second set, so I've got another board to use. And enough for 15 notes. And it also came with these matching coloured counters. And a sparkly glittery gem in each of the seven colours too. So they're special. Now, a couple of things I've tried so far. You could have the student choose a favourite colour. I've picked blue because it's often a favourite with the boys and the girls. So I've just lined up eight tiles to be our octave. So just say this was C major. I might say if I substitute this first tile for the glittery one, where is that glitter one position? So what is the scale degree number, name and letter? So this is scale degree one, tonic, C. And then we might move it. To the fourth note. So this would be the subdominant and it's F. And you could change which scale it was. And because it comes with the coloured counters, I thought you could use them for the sharps and flats. So if we had this as being G major, you could put a counter on top and just say, why does this one need a sharp or a flat? And talk about what it has. I always keep a keyboard nearby so we could discuss the patterns of tones and semitones. You could, if you wanted to, perhaps put the counter above for a sharp and below for a flat. Or just leave it on top and talk about how it is an F sharp in the case of G major and so on. Now, something else I thought you could do. We could actually give each one of those tiles a letter of the music alphabet. So these are just little tiles that I've laminated myself. And so that would become our guide, our code. And so, for instance, if we made a natural minor using the correct letters, we'd have blue, yellow, green, amber, red, clear, purple, 
then back to blue again. So there's our A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then you could talk about what happens if this isn't A natural minor and A harmonic minor. We would need to raise the seventh note and make it G sharp. Now you could also use it for making triads. So let's say we made D major triad. So we'd have D, F, A, and we'd need to have an F sharp in the middle. And again, you could have it that side for the sharp and that side for a flat if you wanted to. And you could talk about if you took the sharp away, you'd be left with D, F, A, which is the D minor tonic triad. So at this stage I'm still just trying out a few ideas. But they certainly are very inviting and colourful game pieces. And I think by not always having the letters on them, just making patterns with the tiles and the gems, it gets students to visualise the letters and think about the patterns of the scales and chords more carefully. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.